to you from Casey Ryan's office today, and we are learning how to set up a wholesaling business, how to scale a wholesaling business, how someone who's been only in the business for about five years, full-time, on his own for three years, has built a multi-million dollar company, We Buy Any Vegas House, and has really, really used his skill set, which is mechanical engineering, to mechanically engineer probably one of the most efficient operations for wholesaling where he measures and manages everything. He's gonna show us everything so that if you're looking to get started in wholesaling and you can say, hey, this guy just started five years ago, he's not even 30 years old and he's got everything that he could ever want, ever thought he would and the sky's the limit now, right? Yep. Would you say that's fairly accurate? I'd say that's pretty accurate, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up, man? Welcome. Thank you. So uh, we're gonna check out your operation today. You wanna show us what's up? Yeah, sure. So we'll start with Jamie. She's the the brains and the execution on all the operation side of things. She's you know helping manage all the books, the invoicing, transaction coordination, communicating with agents on listings, like everything from on the back end to, to keep things. So wrong. she's doing all when you sell everything, she's selling everything. Yep, selling everything, helping uh, any documents that that need to be processed, problems that come up. Just like my right hand person. So most important person yes, in the room. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so what's going on here? Is this the dashboard we're talking about? Yeah, this is the this is the dashboard that tracks all the the calls out, the talk times, answer rates, um, you know, monthly, quarterly talk times. It flashes between a so couple this dashboards. So is, is this right now? Yeah, this is live. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So let's look at this for a little bit. Because Why don't you break this down? Because you know this better than anybody. Yeah, so it tracks the, the number of appointments that they're setting. It tracks how many um, contracts they're, they're getting each month, quarter. It shows the which property addresses are. It just shows who's doing what. That's the dashboard. So if anybody wants to know how they're doing, they just look at that. All right, so... Then it starts right here, right? Yeah, so this is the, the acquisition scene. This is Frank, Casey, and Darnell. They have their setup for all their smartphones so they can be dialing out. So they, that's um, like a soft phone, right? Yep. So and it's got a soft phone, so it rings in, they can use their phone, they hook up to your stuff too. Right, Frank is uh, now an agent too, so he's listing, um, taking a lot of our listing leads for the, the Sweet. Yeah, so for any, uh, majority of people are ask, will typically ask retail to begin with, so they'll go on a lot of those retail appointments. Got it, so you guys are capturing that money for more ad revenue to spend exactly. and reinvest that. And I mean, we have an outside agent too, but um, it's just a lot better to keep it in-house and also just to keep things smooth. All right, and then this is? This is Casey. Casey. Also Casey. And he's, <laughs> you're, a good, you're a good baller too, I hear? I like to play. Okay, Absolutely. good, right on, we're gonna have to play some basketball. You're brand new, but not to this business, right? Right, yes sir. Okay. Chris. Chris, Chris is an agent. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. He's, uh, he's doing our MLS acquisition. So um, he's you know scouring the MLS, sending out offers, negotiating with agents, underwriting deals, and um, just trying to lock stuff up on the MLS. I like this freaking screen, right. dude. This thing is like wicked. Right on. So what are you doing? You're doing MLS deals? Yeah, so we're just uh, hunting through the MLS, trying to find deals that we uh, are able to sell, lock up and flip on the back end. Or... How many you getting? Uh, how many offers are you guys putting out a day? Contacts are probably yeah, closer to 100, you. but we're sending out probably close to 10 offers on. Uh, Formal emails. written. Yeah, absolutely. Formal written offers every yeah. day. Yeah, we'll send a preliminary one and then just start the conversation and anybody who wants a formal one. Hey, Joel, how in here? How what do you like sure? best about working here? It's just awesome all the way around. Hey, Joel. <laughs> that's that's what I told guy. you, man. Your culture is rich, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Set the tone, man. Set the pace. So yeah. awesome. All right, man. Well, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. All right, so we're with Ryan, Casey Ryan's best. <laughs> like, you're, you're the closer. Tell me, tell me what you do here. So I'm the acquisitions manager. So I manage all the guys, but more importantly, I go on the appointments for pretty much everything that we do. So I oversee everything that they're doing, help them with sales scripts, help them with sales training, and then I make calls as well with them. And uh, that's pretty much it. You have a natural ability to build rapport, you said, right? Yep. And I agree with this 100% what you're saying is people are gonna buy you because they trust you and like you. Correct. And they're not gonna buy you because you've got the best looking suit on, it's gonna be because of that nice smile that you walk in with, those compliments that you bring, the water you're willing to drink at their kitchen table, the bre bread you're willing to break. Oh, 100%. On average, 
per week, how many appointments are you going on? Slow down now. I mean, obviously, because the market's absurd. You right. know what I mean? But usually, typically, it's like three to four appointments a week. But it's been a little bit slower trying to get people because everybody knows. they're. Every, it seems like all the sellers are educated. Right. You know, so what the problem is, you're going there and they're like, well, I got an agent involved. I got open door involved. I got Zillow involved. I got open door involved. So it's like you got to break through all those barriers. Most people, sales guys, will just hang up the phone once they hear open door. Right. So I'm like, will, yeah, for sure. we don't care about that. Like, right. you That's know, just another competitor. It is. It's no different than anybody else. But a lot of these guys are scared of them. And that's why I told the guys the other day, it's like, you can't worry about open door because not everybody wants to sell to them. That's been rough, but usually about three to four appointments a week. If you were to talk to somebody who's just brand new in wholesaling, you've been doing this for how many years now? So like, as far as like acquisitions, three years, and then before that, just straight flipping is what I was doing. Okay. So what's your advice to somebody who's never done it, is trying to get started? Has this been a good career path for you? 100%. Um, I would just say that for most people, it's like with, even with like what Casey says, it's like the data is the most important. Like I would be nothing without Casey, you right, know, like if right. he wasn't providing all of how he does all of his SEO stuff, PPC stuff, even the SMS stuff is huge for us. And I have no clue how to do any of that. Right. So as long as you know how to do that stuff to get the leads, I think that's the hardest part, you right. know? I agree. Well, so he's going to say probably closing the lead is the hardest part, but yeah, for we, you and me, like <laughs> getting the lead is the hardest part. Closing exactly. the lead's easy. Exactly. Like if I try to, anybody asks, like if you, why don't you go out and do it on your own? Like I'll have friends that or people that I know ask that. I'm like, no way. Like, yeah. first off, I'm with Casey into, even if the boat was sinking to the bottom of the ocean, I'd still be on the board. Yeah, you're on, like, you're we're going, I'm strapped in, you know? Yeah. It's like the song, Jesus Take the Wheel. Like Casey's, Casey's driving the car. Casey's I'm, taking the wheel. I'm sitting in the back seat and like wherever he takes us, we just go. But I think that the data is such a huge important part of it because if without it, like I wouldn't be able to sit here and call anybody. I think that's a really key point to break off is like that if you respect, cause there's a lot of people who wouldn't take that attitude. Like, yeah, like I got the same thing when I was doing, like I was successful at somebody else's office and he's like, well, why don't you go do your own thing? Why? People are always counting your money for you. Telling you, sure. putting doubt in your head, telling you, oh man, you shouldn't do this or this or that. It's like, dude, you got to rely on your gut instincts, realize that there's, there's a power in people. There's a power and stuff. And plus, I'm sure just by knowing Casey, like if you ever wanted to go do your own thing on your own, he would support you hundred percent. Yeah. He thought once before I was trying to say that to him, I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> like you're misunderstanding. But, but I, I agree. I think that the sales part is obviously that's where a lot of these guys, I think have such a hard time. They start to grow their business and hire these sales guys that go on appointments. And I would show up to an appointment knowing seven other guys, even these guys in town. It's like, I, I know who they all are now. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, I don't even see it as like a competition thing. You know, you know what, what their pitch is going to be. hundred percent. I know what they're going to do. You know, I, they're going to try to overpay and, and then grind down hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So it's like, they're not doing anything different. Uh, I think what makes me generally successful in what I do is just the ability to build that rapport with them. Right. And a lot of these used to see it over and over that they just try to get in and they're aggressive. They, you know, it's like one thing that's always sit down at their kitchen table, but like these guys won't leave. It's like, and people don't like that. And if they go in with a sense of like, I have to have this deal. I got to get this deal. I got to get this deal versus coming from like, in my eyes, a place of abundance where if we can make something work great, and if not, oh well. You All know? right. So one, one kind of wrap up question to that would be like, you know, sometimes I have the attitude when I was definitely a listing was like, you know, I'm not leaving without the listing. Like yeah. I'm going to pressure these people into signing the listing. I don't think that's the same way you should approach uh, get buying properties from distressed people because they they want trust, they want help, they want you to be real with them, and pressure is not going to help them. No, for sure. So, how many of your deals are go backs that I that they called back after they had other people come? You're saying you went there, you left without the deal, and you yeah. had to go back again to get it. I would probably say that majority of them are that nine times out of 10 people go with us because of the trust factor 100 percent. right i go back and you can see that through our reviews and everything like that and i always ask them why did you pick me over somebody else and it's just trust right so there's a lot of times where you know a lot of people are scared to leave that house without having the contract because fear that this person's going to go with somebody else but in in my personal opinion that when i leave there i know i put everything out on the table i gave them everything that they needed and in my eyes i know nobody else is going to do as good as what i'm going to do maybe that's an ego thing but it's how i feel well you and i know you were great at it too like i've heard nothing but great things and i guarantee you know, even, it wasn't as prepared because he, i'm closing based on like thinking like hey I got this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Darnell would tell me, you would just be like, hey, yeah, I'll have the cup. And you'd be like, you'd be just drinking out of this disgusting cup of water. And he'd be like, why are, can you even imagine doing that? But that's what it really takes. Yeah. So I don't, sitting there with them and, and going through with them and understanding what they're going through, what their situation is, 
I don't care about price. I don't care about anything about that matter. I didn't really care about the house. I just care about them and how I can fix their problem. That's the, that's the money shot yeah. right there. If you understand that it's not about the money, it's about their problem and what solutions that you can realistically solve. No, I can't reinstate your mortgage for you and let you live here for the next 30 years. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't work. And I'm sure yeah. you've had that one before. Oh, for too. sure. Yeah. Actually, on Friday, some lady asked me, like, how can I stay here and pay you? I'm like, that's just not how this is going to work. But I would say that probably 50% of the leads that I go on to go to the appointment, leave, I genuinely get a call back and I and I'll go back and sign the contract or I'll send it through them, DocuSign, whatever. So but. you'll so you'll leave them with all the information. What do you bring them on an appointment? So I won't leave like, and now we're, we're starting to change that a little bit because most of the time we won't even leave them a contract. I don't leave them anything in writing because then I know every time they're just gonna shop me for everybody else. Right. They're gonna show the next guy that walks in and be like, hey, it's in writing from Ryan. Mm -hmm. He's at 265. And they're like, okay, I'll pay 265, 500. You know what yeah, I mean? Right, so I don't, right. and I always tell people, go out, shop everybody, get as many offers as you possibly can. I tell them like, I don't get into bidding wars. Like I'm gonna put my best foot forward. I'm gonna try to get you the best offer I can. But in our general, our business practice isn't just to get in a competition of who can and pay the most right you know it's like just not what we do for what i do is i just come paired with i just bring my business card i just and that's pretty much it i don't bring a, a pamphlet of stuff like agents do and all this information right, well, we're the same guy then too yeah i don't, just I rolling don't, up you're comping out the property you know your offer price you're bringing a contract to sign if you want to sign it great if not here's yeah i mean i don't feel like if i bring like casey got these houses for instance like i don't think if i bring this to their house leave them <laughs> it's funny right so it's just yeah. a, to, something to leave them behind. I'm like, I'm, where am I gonna put that in my pocket? Like, come on, like, <laughs> hold on, me, <laughs> it's like, hold on, hold on, let me get this out. But I don't think that any of that gimmicky stuff works. I mean, giving them a pamphlet of stuff, most of these people that are in this distressed position, they're in that problem for the first place because they didn't read anything anyway. You know what I mean? Not in a rude way, but you know what I mean? No. It's not like they're gonna take this pamphlet and really, you know, decipher through it. No. They're just like, they want the convenience of it. They're gonna look at the two page contract that I bring them later. They're gonna barely read through it right. and be like, okay, let's do it. Right. You know, versus like you leave them all this too much information, then overwhelm them. Overwhelm them. Then they're like, the other guy came in with two page contract. They're like, oh, this guy's so much easier versus all this other stuff. Right. Simple. Yeah. No open door, local company. Exactly. And that's what I always tell people like, you can go with open door and be number 10,685, or you can be Troy Kearns, you know, and I'll treat you like that. And that's yeah. how you'll be in my office. And Good. people, 100% respect that. Yeah, because they don't want to be the, another number in the phone and they, everybody realizes the customer service is gone and you're it's providing gone. them that. And if you ever have a question, just call me. I'm accessible yep. if you want to change your mind. Yeah, and I always tell people, if you change your mind, we can just can't, we'll just take the contract, shred it, and we're done. And then people feel comfortable about that, you know, right. versus no, you, you have, like Zillow, they have to cancel. Yeah. It's like, that's ridiculous. Right. So, so you know all the objections that the other guys are gonna say, just ask Zillow if you're dealing with them. Hey, they won't even let you cancel the contract. You're they're, getting and they're, and they're not. Yeah. Like this one lady, I just tied it up on Friday. She dealt with Zillow. She's been in our system. We called her 182 times. Never got a hold of her. Randomly, one of the sales guys called, came back in through that's a text key. message. That's key. 182 tries. Before successful. Before successful. And it was over a year. So like this lady was blown up. And that's not even, the 182 is phone calls. Not including just the text messages that went to her all the time. She randomly just texts back. Goes, you can call me now. Called her on Thursday night. Set the appointment for Friday morning. Went over. She had been dealing with Zillow. Zillow tied her up for literally almost a year. Right. And then she had to like go to court and then she basically won. And then she's right away when that was done, she just happened to call. It's like timing and circumstances, right. number one thing. And the right. timing was perfect for a phone call to go out to her and a text got shot to her because Casey has it so that when a phone call goes out, if they don't answer, a text gets shot to him right away. It's mad scientist. Yeah, he's, he's the mad scientist, <laughs> but you got to have a great sales guy who can go in there and close. And it's nice to finally yeah. meet you in yeah. person. Yeah. I've heard like nothing but good things about you great. from Bye. Casey. And then obviously Darnell, they all talk about you just being an ultimate closer. Yeah. So just keep it going. Thanks. And hopefully you guys are not at the bottom of a boat uh, together. <laughs> you guys are in an airplane, right? Yeah, for sure. Right? Thanks, Troy. All, right. all right, thanks, brother. Yep. All right, so Darnell, how did you get your start in this business? By working with you, Troy. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so tell us about your history. What have you been doing? And how'd you get over to Casey Ryan's? I've been in acquisitions, which I guess that's, that's what it's called, because I was just a sales guy, but probably about seven years now. I think we did like four together, almost five. Yeah, almost five. Uh, started from just me, you, and Erica in one room, just banging them out deals, banging out, banging out, doing listings, trying to get as many listings as we can for the big fella. Uh, then we kind of evolved into doing more of uh, wholesaling, and notice of defaults, just pretty much anything that we can get our hands to. And that's kind of where I really started breaking break ground and and listening to him uh listening to other guys in, in the business and the main thing i think with me and having success is kind of like the follow-up and building a rapport day in and day out that's kind of i'm on the phone so you don't learn that 
just from being like funny and, and you know, like, you know, you got to actually make the calls and sound horrible and hear yourself sounding horrible and, and be able to be critiqued, which he did often. Uh, but it got me to where I'm at right now. So what's the, what's the key to your success here? Casey's like the mad mad scientist, so he's got to set up to where we're on these uh, these dollars. It's pretty much just dumbed it down where I'm only hitting one button but pretty much doing all the dialing for me and following up, following up. Cause not usually I get on the phone with somebody and we set up a price and then all of it sound good and I go and close the deal. Usually I'm, I'm dealing with somebody that just may procrastinate a lot and, and so I gotta follow up to stay on top of them and, and kind of hold their hand through the process, but that's the only way you're gonna get, get paid. And are you actually going on the appointments now? Not in this outfit, but yeah, I'm going on. <laughs> What's up with the Led Zeppelin? I didn't know you were a big guy. Uh... Oh, absolutely. I'm a fan of shirts costing $12. This was a $12 shirt, and that made me a fan of it. Uh, things are going in the direction they should be, and I, I'm gonna be here as long as they let me. Well, I think that's a great thing to be seeing that like you were over were with us before. Casey's a great guy. I thought you would feel in well over here. You've been here now a couple of years. Um, was like two? I mean, no, I'm a year and one month now. I got okay. in 13. June. I got in like where it was like COVID. So okay. it, was, it was rough when I came in. Okay. okay. And I'm pretty sure the boss may call you like, hey, man, it, D ain't, I, I D ain't not, clicking. I cannot, I, I cannot confirm nor deny that. So, yeah, so, but but they just say the same thing with you. You, I couldn't, my first deal with you was my mama house. So, yeah. <laughs> so they, they helped me and, and I'm still in the process. Uh, I'm not Ryan, but um, yeah. I want to be at some point. Good. So just learn from him. I do. Get, get, follow his lead. And I feel like if I hear, I'm the kind of guy like my boy Casey. He knew if I hear him say something good, I'm writing this shit down, and I'm, I'm going, I'm going to use it. Well, it sounds like you're doing great, man. It's awesome. Thank you. To see good to see you again. Man. Absolutely, I appreciate Take it. My mic. Uh, uh, I thought you were trying to steal my chain. I knew it. The reason that we're doing an interview at Casey's office, We Buy Any Vegas House, is the name of your business here, right? Yep. And how many houses have we bought this year total? Total we've closed, because some of those are sales, um, but 155 this year. 155 closed deals, which you told me prior to us talking that that it was more than you closed all year last year. Correct, yeah. Last year we did like 140 or so. And then the year before that was like 145. So you got lots of hate. You got lots of people right now saying the market's dead. There's a balloon, which we know there is. Obviously. For sure. Yeah. For, for sure. But you're you're still buying. Are you buying houses right now? Yeah, I am. And I'm actually taking advantage. I'm selling one to Open Door right now. I'm making more selling to Open Door than if I would, you know, hold it, flip it, renovate it, resell on the market. I'm making more just selling it to home, Open Door as is. I'm just a lot, taking, a lot of guys are doing that right yeah. now. Like you're three years on your own been doing this business, you got into wholesale and you got a mechanical engineer degree, right? Yeah. By, by definition, that means he's smart be, or, or, <laughs> or, or, or at least has the skill set, the mathematical skill set, that tool set to think a certain way differently than a lot the way a lot of people think, right? And so when you built this business, you built it with that mindset. Agreed, yeah. I, I saw a lot of um, real estate investors were, were going about it um, with just, you know, a gorilla type mentality, which we do too, right. but we just incorporate data because it's everything, all everything that we do on the back end, that's what all marketing, I mean, sure, we're in real estate, but ultimately it's a sales and marketing company. Right. And the, the marketing side of, of thing drives, you know, all the leads in, and if you want to produce high high volume of good quality leads that uh, are affordable at a good price, right. you've got to add your, your marketing and your data dialed in. So you started wholesaling, you started your own business, and you're 29 years old, and I think that most people that look at you, they wouldn't be able to guess your age. I think the biggest thing that, that we want to offer people, at least for my channel, is to tell them that like, Anybody can do this. So you did 155 deals this year so far. To, let's, it's August, by the way, because yeah, I don't know if they know that. Yeah, it is August. As of today's date, we've got four months to go, 155 deals. How do you think you're going to close out the year? Definitely over 200. Um, maybe, I don't know, in the, the, the low 200s. So you use a CRM. How do the leads come in? You track the leads. Let's go through what kind of leads you're getting, where they're coming from, and all of that so people know. Yeah, so um, I do a lot of the the 
the same marketing channels that everybody does, but I just mastered them one at a time. I started with um, text message marketing because it's the cheapest to do and started, got really good at that, started generating a lot of leads there. As my CRM, I use Podio. And then just over the last three years, I've just built on the back end of it, it's called Globiflow. And it's basically you can build out automate, automation. So I've built out, you know, one on automation at a time. Oh, this would be a good idea. And I just learned it and I, I got a good feel for how things work. And then I have, when things are beyond my skills, like, cause there's some stuff that's like truly in depth coding. Programming? Yeah, I have a developer that I, I have a developer and he, he'll go through and he'll program it all out or I'll spend an hour with him and, and just watch what he's doing and then I learn it or if I, if I have something I don't have time to do, he'll do it but then I just build off that, build, copy that, build it, build it, build it, build it. So it went like when I initially started with Podio, it was just, you know, basically the same as my notepad. It would just had, you know, line, it's an Excel sheet in a sense, right. a sense, just with a better, you know, way to maneuver around it. But he started with no automations at all. Now I have, you know, a bunch of different workspace, my seller leads, app in Podio has 180 flows, automations, um, just that I've built out day by day. What is your best source of leads right now? What's the best quality lead is SEO, which is just organically when you show up on right. Google. So the best SE the best lead is an SEO lead. As far as quality. Quality, right? The most closable, we're gonna assume. Correct, the most closable, yeah. The most one, close in, one in four SEO leads will convert, or one in um, 10 PPC leads will convert. PPCs, pay-per-click, like Google. What do you, you pay-per-click? It used to be like 200 to 250, now it's like, 400 to 600. And it's you're just, spending money on that right now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you got the pay per click. That's obviously what it is. It's $400. And how many of those? Leads close one in one in ten. Yeah. So you're so it's four thousand dollars potentially, potentially versus and what does it cost to build out the SEO per month? SEO is not that expensive to build up. It just takes time and you have to do it right. I, I don't spend that much, maybe $1,500 to $2,000 a month on, on SEO. And that's a, a company, a management company that makes sure that your site is operating properly. All the, you know, everything's updated. The plugins are all updated and so forth. Um, and then I have a content writer. So she's writing articles, blogs. Every, blogs every week, you know, like, you know, what's the top things to look at to renovate your house before you sell it? What's it consider before you take a cash offer? Just right a bunch of different ideas. She writes a couple articles a week and then they'll upload that across all of our different platforms. You know, like they'll upload it on Google My Business, they'll upload it on the website, they'll upload it across the board to help strengthen your website. But you, if you try to do things where, you know, it's called backlinking, where yes, yes. like your- Buy those fake backlinks. It's yeah, not like your work. website link is in an article from, you know, a Seattle loan company. Like that's a backlink. Right. You can, you can just plug in and be connected to 10,000 backlinks, but Google will see that you did that. Nice. So you just have to do things organically. And if you do, if you end up on, you know, a dog food site, Google is going to eventually see that you're on the right, wrong types of sites. Or even if you're on a bad site, right. like an X rated site, Google will blacklist your, your website and your SEO will just be forever tainted. You know, it'll take a long time to come back. So right. you have to just do it over time. Thanks. I remember it, it, my site's probably five years old now. And right. I remember for the first two, two and a half, years it was like nothing at all right. ever yeah you know then we hired a company and then it's like you could pay that you know 1200 bucks a month or whatever you're paying for eight months and see absolutely nothing and be like this sucks it doesn't work right you know move on but it just takes time then it, it was like once I started invest, getting to know SEO a little bit better and knowing what to look for in a company because I've been through so many SEO companies. It's like it's me like, too. Me too. It's I like know. black magic. Nobody really knows what's. I mean, they're they, saying all these knows, words. That, the guy we've hired freaking knows. He got yeah. me number one ranked on my quick toe. He got me number one ranked yep. on, on, we're, we're competing against you, I yep. think is the only one, but like you said, it takes time mm -hmm. and it's, but as you look at it, like $400 caught pay per click, one in 10, that's $4,000. If I'm paying $2,000 for the next three years to build my website up and eliminate that pay-per-click cost, yep. which I'm sure you're trying to do, and then you're eventually maybe the pay-per-click guy. Um, I think that um, no matter what, they, they kind of all go in hand, hand in hand. So right. the more money I'm spending on Google, they're gonna, you know, on their back end be deciding like this guy's credible, you right. know? So I think that helps your, your site rank and you end up getting traffic that they can't really even track. Like let's say you run an ad on Facebook and then PPC, they see your name twice, then they go back 
and it's going to direct them back to your site one or they may just go organically search your site and it seems like you're like it just all goes hand in hand you got to be doing all of it right much. are you guys cold calling yeah we're cold calling too yep okay what else are you doing text message cold calling ringless voicemail pay-per-click seo facebook um, let's go through s let's go through ringless voicemail and facebook facebook i don't love but um what i've come to learn too is that the leads don't always end up coming through Facebook. Right. They may, um, you know, see your ad or click on it in Facebook and not enter their information, but then later they'll go to your site and it seems like it's an organic lead, but you can see that it originated from Facebook. So I learned that over time, but Facebook also produces really low quality leads because people can so easily just click on the ad and it auto fills their information. Yeah. It just makes it too easy to where they're not as qualified, you know? Right. And a lot of times they just call in like, what, what, what's my, basically they want to know what their house is worth right you know or they see a house in one of your ads and they're like well, is this house for rent or can i buy this house it's yeah. like that's not so we it's get just, a lot of those it's just inst instant response like uh, it's not, too easy right i'm not thinking about nothing your ad popped up right it, so versus if you have like a landing form in your pay-per-click ad that um, you, you can see which leads are, are better quality leads by one, they go on there, they fill out, they got to fill out their information. But two, the leads that go to the next step where they fill out, what's the condition? Why are you selling? How soon do you want? That kind of stuff. Those second tier of leads are always going to be better quality. So, and you, you just want to measure how many are, are coming to that first landing page, how many of them are going to the second landing page, and then how many are you converting total, you know? So that, that, that's kind of the, well, that's pay, back to pay-per-click again, but then SMS is you'll pull a list of say 50,000 people you'll have their their property address their mailing address their first name last name that's the pretty much the, the the things you need and then you go to a skip tracing company you pull it and skip. what do you use I use IDI it's like a direct uh, so if you go if you go to like a lot of these online sites that'll say like you know skip whatever skip tracing 101 whatever right they'll they'll probably batch leads is a big one right? yeah batch yep so they'll have they'll have a, a, a contract with those data providers to they'll say I guarantee you that I'm going to be skip tracing at least 300,000 records a month and then they get a discount on pricing and then they mark that pricing up to you so it'll be somewhere between you know 12 and 15 cents per hit on a bulk scale so if you go directly to the the data the data providers you have to be able to provide them with volume and I really don't that much anymore because just, you're recycling the same stuff yeah so I just did it I, I, I had a buddy who had uh, access to that pricing which is like you know four or five cents a record for that same exact data and we just hit it all at once so what it, where are you buying it from IDI and Delve point those are the IDI two. and Delve point okay mm -hmm. that's good to know if you're looking to go and buy them directly you're looking to scale your business that's key to scaling yep. being able to buy cheap data and the only way you're gonna be able to buy cheap data is if you buy a lot of it right exactly yeah they want they're not gonna, they're not gonna sell you 5,000 records they're not gonna sell you 10,000 records they're gonna sell you they will but at you know 15 cents or 18 right. cents or something and that's always the deal with data that yeah. was with you know with TLO which I still use yep. with other... which is like a buck a pop but that data is the best that data far. is the best yeah. that's the one where you're like okay I gotta find this guy right that's what a private investigator would use but they're doing one-offs if you're gonna do mass marketing you can't be one off in them and paying a buck a no it's just the one that you know that hey we drove it we know what it is yeah. it's, it's it, our guys have been by there it's a hard one to find we need to spend a little bit of effort because everybody else is quitting here exactly let's go a little and that's bit where the money's at especially if you run a big list like let's say you ran 50,000 records and you got you know 80% uh, hit rate so you got 40,000 back that less 10,000 you want to figure out a way to, to market to them more extreme and find a way to get get their information because those those are the ones everyone's like okay I'm gonna hit the 40,000 and they move on from the 10. Exactly. Okay. So we got that. We got the skip trace. We got all those lead sources. Is there anything else? Are you doing any like mailing? Are you doing any like postcards or anything like that? Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't do direct mail for so long because it's okay. just, that your cost per lead is way higher. It's even my cost per lead for direct mail is even higher than my PPC, which is my most expensive channel. Um, but they're you know they're, they they're consistent. So as you scale your business up, I would not recommend starting with direct mail. Right. But those SMS leads are kind of like it's market specific. I'll give you an example. We dropped 600 mailers through Deal Machine's lead source. Mm -hmm. I dropped them in multiple markets. I've dropped them in. Las Vegas, I dropped him in Kansas City, and I dropped him in St. Joe, Missouri. When I dropped him in St. Joe, Missouri, my phone rang like 
it wouldn't stop. Right. I said, I cannot be, do any business here. It's too, my phone's ringing too much. If I was in Vegas, I'd make a million bucks a month doing that. You know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah. by dropping mail. It, it, so I would say that direct mail works. It works even better in, in smaller markets. It works for sure. way better in smaller markets and big markets where you have massive amount of pizza, massive amounts of people trying to sell you whatever they're trying to sell you. Or you have those those monster companies with open door offer pad Zillow. They're not going to be marketing in those gray area type marketings that aren't compliant. So they're focusing on web site type leads and direct mail type leads. So they're gonna, they're sending that type of um, marketing out all the time and you can't compete with them. So you're just trying everything and measuring it all the time. That's the biggest thing for yep. you. You measure everything. So where's been your biggest lead source this year was SEO? Uh, revenue is always SMS and deal so source because I can produce the most amount of leads. So the deal source? SMS has is been my best. best source of deals. Got it. Yeah, so SMS as far as volume and revenue has always, always leads. So let's walk through SMS. SMX is text messaging, right? Yep. It's a science, right? For sure, yeah. It's Let, let's go, let's, let's, everybody can figure out everything else, but this is the part that I think you started and you have it better mm -hmm. than anybody. So the best skill set that Casey has is he's an engineer first, sales guy second. I am a sales guy first, engineer fifth or sixth or seventh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and if you, even if you do have that, if you do have that um, skill set of being good at the data, if you don't have a strong sales team on the back end, then it, all of it's for nothing, you right. know? You need so both. yeah, you, you definitely need both. So it's it's when you have that, you know, harmony of a strong marketing data side of it and a strong sales team, that's when you find real success. But yeah, I, I started on the marketing end and then I was just going to appointments, closing them too. So let's get into back into SMS. So that's been your best skill set. That's where you load data. How does that work in the background for you? It's working right now, right? Yeah. Are people getting text messages right now? Yes. Yes. At what speed, at what rate, and how? Honestly, I've tried to, to, to scale it back down a little bit because the carriers have increased their, their filters and they just, they, they uh, released the Shake and Stir Act, which is like a Congress putting out there. I like, meant to ask you about that. Yeah, so, because everybody's like, oh, everybody who's doing text messages is gonna sh get shut down. Yeah. So what's the Shake and Stir Act? Well, it's it's basically, I mean, I, I, I don't know it exactly, to be honest. I just know that um, the, the repercussions and the tracking is a lot more um, extreme. So if you're buying a phone number, instead of in the past, you could just buy that phone number, use it till it's tagged as spam by the carrier, and then release it into the wilderness, and it's gone forever. And right. now, every phone number you buy, you need to register to your business. So they know if you're doing that, if something happens where so the, there's a class action lawsuit, let's call it, they're like this guy was the one who owned those numbers during that period of time. That's essentially what. So does done. that does that change your strategy with asset protection? With asset protection, I mean, always. How you register those businesses? Who owns them? Who's the manager? Is it a different person? Uh, here's the thing: is at the end of the day, if you end up in court over something like that, you should probably just settle to, to begin with. But right. if you end up in court, right. they're they're, they're not going to be like, "Oh, your LLC owned that." They're going to be like, "No, this was you. You did this." If somebody's going into SMS texting, you're loading all those numbers into Podio. No, so you're going to load them into like a third party platform. Podio has a, has a difficult, Salesforce is, is more robust and, and Podio gets bogged down when you have a ton of leads and data. So like even when we open up our Podio, we have like 17,000 leads from over the last five years. Right. You know, some of them are still, you know, they may have been sold, whatever, but that 17,000 sometimes on certain days, you'll click it and it'll be like 45 seconds before they all start showing up and then your views start showing up. Like it gets bogged down. And when you're doing SMS and, and those types of mass marketing, you have 50,000 records. It, it's, it's just going to slow Podio down. So you're going to have a th like a third party provider, like some software provider that's going to, you'll upload your list into, and then you'll, you know, filter. What monitor. do you use? What is? I just built my own out because I I was using a lot of other ones. There, there are good ones. There's what have you used? How about that? Lead Sherpa, Batch, Roar, Launch Control. Roar, I used that way back when. Yeah, so over time I saw that in the beginning in 2018, my, I was able to get my, other people were, weren't able to get their response rates quite this high, but I was having anywhere from like 18 to 20% pretty consistently. And I would watch other people, their response rates were like 
you know, three to 5%. So I could make m my marketing a lot more effective. You think about on a scale, if you, see, if you factor in how many you're sending out, if you're getting a response rate that's five or 10 times what other people's are, then your marketing is that much more effective and your cost is that much lower. Basically, you take an Excel, Excel list, you'll upload on the platform and map the fields, you know, whatever it is, you know, first name, last name, property address, then the phone numbers that you skip trace. I would always, um, when you skip trace, it's gonna give you back, whether it's a mobile or landline, I'll filter them out um, so that I'm only marketing that marketing channel to mobiles because you can't deliver a text message to a landline, obviously, so you don't wanna be sending out pointless messages that are just, you're wasting money. Right. So uh, filter it all out, just the mobiles, and then once you set, send it out, you wanna have a really good um, like sales funnel sequence. Nurture. Uh, nurture system. Sales nurture system. and then Click like- funnel. Yeah, it's a sales funnel. Yeah, click funnel. Yeah, it's a sales funnel. So you'd start with all of yours, you'd send them all out, and then after you filter through that first round of let's just say, let's say you have one person and you got 10 number phone numbers for them. If you find out which one's the right one and you're in contact with it, and I tag that as this is the owner, those other nine numbers are just gone. Oh, gone. So I right. no longer market to them. They go in a different pool, and then that narrows it down, narrows it down, narrows it down. Now the fifth time you've gone through that round of people that maybe didn't respond or whatever, and and then you can follow up with the right numbers for those types of people. You just want to funnel it down so that eventually, when you start, you, you may be sending out a lot of text messages. Right. And that should, if, if you're using the right platform, it should give you the tools to be able to, to hone that in so right. you're not just sending out, you, so you don't need to send out 100,000 a month or whatever, you right. know? Right, got it. Okay, so once they become a lead and you are ready to start closing them virtually, um, obviously that some of them come quicker, the, text message, it sounds like it's got a smaller nurturing process, and then it goes. Where longer you, nurturing yeah, process. Sorry, yeah, a, a longer nurturing process, meaning that it takes them longer to actually become a prospect, a lead, or whatever. Exactly, uh, yeah. So like it, on, an, on a, an average text message or SMS deal for us, that's it's usually from lead creation to contract, I think it's like 95 days, versus PPC and SEO is like 20 days. Right. You know, it's a longer process, and the conversion's a lot lower, so you'll have, you know, 80 or 100 SMS leads to one contract versus PPC will be 10 leads to a contract. Got it. So, you, and you gotta have a blend of the two because if you're just, you know, bur like uh, showering your guys with leads, they get burnt out, they get lead fatigue, they, they, they have to make more calls to convert. So you need to have those good quality leads sprinkled in between so they get that like revitalization when they close a, a deal, then they're, you know, it gives them more energy and excitement and motivation. Water and, then, and how many offers are you guys trying to get out a day? In the past, when I was doing it and having success with it, I was very focused and I was probably sending out 10 to 15 a day, but now we can send, I mean, I've, I've, I've used Podio and other platforms too to just be able to, I, if I want, I could send out every single listing and offer in one day, but it's just too overwhelming for, so we try to send out like 100 to 300 a day or, or so. Oh, you're sending out one to 300 a day? Are yeah. they just coming in the form of an email, like here's your offer? Yeah, I don't, I. I it's uh, not an RPA? No, I could do that, but I haven't. I just want, I want, the, the whole point is to start the dialogue, so I want them to be talking and seeing which, because uh, the, the listing that's, you know, the house that's worth 300,000 that's listed for 200,000, everybody's on it, it's getting bid up to the moon. It's those ones that are in between that you gotta negotiate down. That's, right, that's right. those like your, your $300,000 that's listed for $400,000, or your $500,000 that's listed for? Mm, more like if it's a $350,000 house and it's listed for 320, and you negotiate them down the rest. Right. You know, because if they're just grossly underpriced, then everybody sees it and everybody's on it. Right. Okay. And you don't always know those sellers' motivations unless you start that conversation. So finding motivated sellers that want to sell with agents that can get the deal done. And right. Okay, so you guys do, how many deals are coming from the MLS these days? Um, it's been, it, it, we're just scaling back up. That's why I brought Chris on. We, we kind of put it on the back burner just because we were so busy with all of our other stuff, but, and the inventory was down to like 1,900 active single family. So like you'd, you'd make an You're wasting time. You, you can get a deal here you and there. Do you have probate anymore these days? No, I don't, I don't go to probate uh -huh. anymore. Basically, you're always trying new lead sources. You're measuring those lead sources, but you believe that there's multiple lead sources because they all kind of work together off each other and then when one's not going good you replace it with something else and yeah then, or just pay more attention to see why it's not and get it fixed you know but okay. it's not like you're gonna start PPC and then it's gonna bring you 10 deals a month it's like you, you you get good at one thing and SMS will bring you like one to three deals a month and then you add PPC and it'll bring you one to two and then you got SEO and all those different lead channels just slowly add up to so you could be doing that how do you get the appointments follow-up extreme follow-up so the acquisitions 
guys are, are constantly calling and following up on all the leads when they're created. They try to call any high dollar, high motivation leads, website, inbound type leads. They'll, the, you'll see some of them if they submit their information on a web form. We may call them you know, 45 times before we get a hold of them in four days. So they're, they're all hounding these people until they can get them on the phone. That is so key for people to understand. And the main thing I wanna say is like, Casey Ryan has set up the best wholesaling business that I've seen. That's the takeaway from this video is if you want to set up a wholesale business, you have better have great sales guys. You better build great sales skills. If you don't have them, you better partner with somebody who does. Find someone that you can hire who does. And of course, you need to make sure that all of the data you have is tracked. You're tracing it and you're following it and you're tr changing what you do constantly. Then you're analyzing what you're doing constantly just so you can find out what works, why it works, how it works and then repeat what works yep. and then get rid of what does it and ch or change it so exactly. it does. Casey, thanks for sharing the time with us in your office. Yeah, of course, anytime. <laughs>